the Supreme Court in 2020 has reignited the debate of the subcategorization of not only the OBCs but the SCSTs as well. And this is not the first time that it is being debated. The need has been felt since a long time. Hello and welcome everyone to the Polity Primer series of Drishti IAS. My name is Pragya and the title of our today's discussion is Need for Subcategorization of OBCs. In this discussion today, we will be discussing the historical evolution of the OBC reservation in India. We will also see why there is a need for subcategorization of OBCs. We will see what is the G. Rohini Commission that has been constituted by the parliament which has submitted its report recently to the President of India. Then we will also see what are the terms of references of the G. Rohini Commission and we will also see the challenges faced by the G. Rohini Commission and in the end we will discuss a practice question for your prelims examination and a practice question for your mains examination. This topic is very relevant for both prelims and mains examination because this is currently in news and an analysis based question can be asked in your mains examination. Now let us proceed to see the background of our topic or the context in which we are having this discussion today. So as I have mentioned before that the G. Rohini Commission has been constituted by the parliament in 2017 to study about the need of subcategorization of the OBCs and it has submitted its full and final report on 31st July to the President of India. Now let us understand the historical background of the OBCs in India and who are OBCs and what is the status of their reservation. So if we talk about who are the other backward castes in India, they are somewhere between the higher caste and the Dalits and the Shudra. So, they fall somewhere between these higher castes and the Dalits and the Shudras as per the ancient Varna system. If we talk about the constitutional aspect, they are recognized as the socially and economically backward classes. So, what happened was, what is the history? How they, did they get their reservation? So, a committee was formed in 1953 known as the Kalilkar Commission. And it was the first commission, first uh, backward class commission, first backward class commission which recognized the OBCs as the backward classes. And it submitted its report to recognize them as OBCs and to give them reservation. But on this report, the parliament and the central government of that time, it did not react and the OBCs had to wait for another two decades and in 1980 what happened was the Mandal Commission was formed. It uh, recognized that the OBC population constituted 52% and identified 1, 2, 5, 7 communities as backward and it suggested 27% reservation for the OBCs in the uh, government job as well as government education institutions. So, this was affirmed by the parliament at that time, the ruling government at that time and it was also implemented. So, currently following the recommendations of the Mandal Commission, the reservation policy reserving 27% of seats in the unit posts and services for the OBC has been granted under Article 16 Clause 4 of our Indian Constitution which talks about positive discrimination in the favour of OBCs in the matters of public employment. In 2008, this was also granted in educational institutes run by the central government, the 27% reservation under Article 15 Clause 4 of our Indian Constitution. So, this reservation is a positive discrimination and it is done to uplift the marginalized communities in India who have been historically wronged. So, that is why Reservation has been recognized for the OBCs communities as well and they are currently entitled for 27% reservation in the central and government jobs as well as in the educational institutions. Now, let us see the Indra Sohni case which changed the landscape of reservations in India. So, in the Indra Sohni case was Indra Sohni versus Union of India, the Supreme Court uh, decided the constitutional validity which was given to the uh, reservation given to the OBC community and it upheld the 27% reservation that was given to the OBC committee. So, by a majority of the uh, 6 is to 3 that is 
six uh, judges were in favor and three judges dissented the nine judge constitution bench of the supreme court ruled that the union government's decision to hold a 27% reservation for socially and economically disadvantaged segments is a lawful provision so the reservation policy was of the obcs were recognized by in this case but this case capped the reservation at 50% that means you cannot reserve more than 50% of the seats in the educational institution as well as in government job so the reservation policy was capped by this decision to 50% now let us study that why there is a need for subcategorization of the obc community so as i was discussing this before also in 2020 the supreme court has reignited this debate that there is a need to subcategorize these backward classes communities which are uh, receiving the vertical reservations in india so let me take you back to the 2005 case the case law name is ev chinaya versus state of andhra pradesh and this is also a supreme court uh, judgment which, which was reconsidered in the 2020 and in this case the supreme court held that the scheduled caste form one homogeneous groups therefore any interse classification within this scheduled castes will be a violation of article 14 so article 14 permits positive discrimination but it prohibits class discrimination that you cannot create a particular class of people and you will get give all the benefits of equality to those class of people and that is why it is said that by the supreme court that if uh, the schedule and the backward classes constitute one homogeneous groups and we cannot further subcategorize them in other words it prohibited the subcategorization of the schedule caste communities but this judgment was reconsidered by the supreme court in 2020 and what did it opine it opined that disagreeing with the 2005 constitution bench verdict the supreme court asserted that there are unequals within the lists of sc sts and socially and economically backward classes that is the obcs so what is happening is see there is there is sc community there is st community and there are obc communities as well but in obcs there is a discrimination of uh, non creamy and creamy layer the creamy layer cannot avail the benefits of the reservation which is uh, given to the obcs but what is happening is the reservation is taken by the affluent people it is not reaching to the people who should ideally avail the benefits of the reservation most of the people are not even aware of their constitutional rights and that is why the supreme court took notice of this fact and said that there is a class of unequals within the group itself there is a class of unequals between scs sts and obcs and most of the benefits are being taken by affluent people either of whose parents are in government jobs so they are already uplifted why do they need reservation now now they can uh, now there is a need to uplift those groups those marginalized communities within these communities who have still not been uplifted the sc referred the issue of preferential treatment for sub certain subcast within the ST, scs and sts to a larger bench and the argument for subcategorization or creating categories within obc reservation is that it ensures equitable distribution of representation amongst all obcs categories so this is what i was also talking about that within these categories not all groups are equally represented not all groups receive equal amount of reservation and there is a quantifiable data which shows that that uh, there is an unequal distribution of the reservation within these groups and that is why the supreme court felt the need to uh, have such a strong observations in the 2020 case now let us see what is the g rohini commission which has been uh, constituted by our indian parliament so it is a four member commission headed by justice g rohini as the name itself suggest a retired chief justice of the uh, delhi high court and the commission was appointed in 2017 and it had received 14 extensions to submit it submit its report the commission was set up in recognition of the perceived distortion in the affirmative action policy so as i was discussing before also that re reservation is an affirmative action of the state to uplift those people who have not been 
uplifted till now who have been in historically wronged by the other people so that is why there but there are distortions in this uh, reservation policy or the affirmative action policy and the parliament also took notice of this fact and constituted this commission in 2017 under which article of our indian constitution article 340 of our indian constitution and it empowers the president of india to appoint a commission to investigate issues concerning obcs and make recommendations to improve the situation so there is this national commission for backward classes as well ncbc which has recently been granted the constitutional status by the 102nd constitutional amendment what does this ncbc do it also makes recommendations and the president under article 345 is empowered to constitute a commission for the welfare of these minorities communi communities in india and the rohini commission was also set up under article 340 to analyze what is happening within the obc community and is there a really a need to subcategorize them now let us see what were the terms of reference of the g rohini commission so the first term is to investigate the extent of inequitable uh, distribution of reservation among castes or communities in the broad categories of the obcs then the second uh, reference was to develop the mechanism criteria norms and parameters for subcategorizations between uh, between uh, those obc category using a scientific approach to begin the process of identifying and classifying the respective caste community subcaste and the central list of obcs and to review the various entries in the central list of obc recommend changes to any repetition ambiguities inconsistencies or spelling or transcription errors with this uh, last fourth reference was added in 2020 so basically this commission was tasked to preview the overall situation of the reservation system in for the obcs and it has submitted its report on 31st july 2017 though the report is not public yet because it is a very politically sensitive matter and the lok sabha elections are going to happen in 2024 and definitely it will affect if this report is made public it will affect the uh, voting share of the political parties and as per in an information received the rohini commission has proposed dividing the obcs into four further categories and the reservation percentage will be 2% 6% 9% and 10% so the commission has categorized for the subcategorized the obc community into four categories and suggests these persons of reservation to them so this was all about the constitution of jirohini commission and the terms of reference of the jirohini commission now let us study further about the challenges which were faced by the jirohini commission so what is the first challenge there is a lack of quantifiable data so to uh, grant 27% reservation to the obc community we are still following the 1931 census and during that time the obcs were more than 50% of the total population of india but this has significantly changed the data analyzed by the uh, jiro hini commission is inaccurate to an extent because the census is not happening it was supposed to happen in 2021 but it was stopped due to the covid 19 pandemic so if we are not having a census how will we realize that what is, what actually is the ground reality what do we need to do and how has the reservation uh, system played up in our indian country so the lack of data posed one of the main challenges for the jiro hini commission then there is a demand of caste based census by the various political parties and we have seen that the bihar government has also acted on the caste based census and it is planning to conduct a caste based census so and the political parties are arguing that we need to find out that what is the percentage of each caste caste in the various states and that is why they are demanding continuously a caste based census and we have seen this already in bihar that it is planning to conduct the caste based census so even though there is a, a need for census i the commission also faced the challenge of having a caste based census so these were the challenges faced by the jirohini commission while 
uh, analyzing the need of OBCs in India. So, with this we have con uh, come to a conclusion of our today's discussion. We have seen that by the historical background of the reservation given to the OBCs. We have also seen the opinion of Supreme Court in this regard and we have also seen why there is a need for subcategorization of the OBCs because one third of the OBCs that, is, that are mentioned in the central list of 2600 OBCs are getting the uh, benefit only one third. The rest of them are not able to receive it and that is why there is a need for subcategorization of uh, these uh, persons and definitely the reservation should not go to the creamy layer persons who are already very affluent. So, we have also seen what were the challenges that are faced by the Jirohini Commission and we have also pondered about the question that yes, now we need a serious census in India. Now we need to figure out because they are developing the Central Vista project also and the main aim of the project was to increase the seats and they have thought in the mind, the central government has a thought in the mind to conduct the census and the census is long overdue. So, we need to have a census or, or uh, the political parties are pressurizing the central government to have a caste based census. So, this was all about the need for subcategorization of the OBC. Now, let us see a practice question for your prelims examination. So, consider the following statements about the Jirohini Commission. It was set up in 2017. It established under Article 340 of our Indian Constitution. It analyzed the subcategorization of SESTs. Kindly drop your answer in the comment box below. Now, let us see a practice question for your mains examination. Does reservation system in India needs a complete overhaul? Comment. So, kindly practice this question for your main answer writing practice. I hope this session was insightful for you. Kind, if you found the today's discussion helpful, kindly like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such updates. Thank you.